What you are looking at here is my OpenGL 3D renderer that I have been working at for the past few years. You might be wondering why am I making a 3D renderer when I could just use an engine. You see, I tried Unity some time ago and I really was impressed by the things that I could achieve so normally I started to make a game but soon realized that instead of writing code I would just spend all my time messing about in the Unity editor and sometimes copy paste some scripts into my projects. I wanted a way to be able to have good graphics while writing all the code myself. This is why I started working on the library GL3D. The two things that I wanted was a high level easy to use library and achieve good graphics. I won't get into details now because it's still in work in progress but I'll show you a small code snippet. To make the library easy to use, I made a python script that merges all the files and shaders into a cpp and header that you can add to our project and it even optimizes the shader code. This is what the API roughly looks like. First, you need to initialize the library, then you can load your 3D models and skyboxes, and if you want to draw something to the screen, you need to create an entity and add a model to it. Now, let's look at the features that my library has. If you aren't into computer graphics, I think you will find these things here interesting because I'll explain them in an easy to understand manner, so make sure to stick till the end. Probably the most important thing is that I'm using a physically based rendering model. PBR is what all modern engines use and it basically means using some mathematical formulas that try to simulate real lighting conditions. The result is very good graphics in any lighting condition, as you can see here, and easy to tweak materials. The main parameters of a material are its color, its metallic value and its roughness value, and with these parameters you can achieve some very incredible results. Let's now talk about lighting. The engine supports four types and they are point, directional, spot and ambient light. Ambient light is just a skybox and it influences the lighting of the scene. Point light is just emitting lights in all directions. Directional light is usually used for light sources like the sun because it emits light rays in only one direction. And spotlight is just like a point in a flashlight. I can tweak the parameters of the lights and I also have shadows which are quite expensive so in order to optimize them I implemented something similar to what I've seen in this article about Doom 2016 where I cache shadows for static geometry. Link in the description if you want to read more about that. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's see some visual effects. The most interesting to look at is the bloom, which is basically an effect that happens when the light is so bright that it blinds you and it seems to take more space. The pipeline also has filmic HDR tone mapping, and for people that don't know what that means, it just makes very bright colors appear whiter, like they would do so in real life. Next on my list is screen space ambient occlusion, and it is a cheap way of adding some small shadows in places like corners. I have a video about this if you want to dive deeper into this kind of effect, where I briefly explain how it works, so you might also find that interesting. Next is fast approximate anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is more of a correction than an effect, and it basically means making edges look like pixelated. You can see it in action here, and FXAA is just one of the many algorithms that can achieve this effect. The last thing to talk about is called chromatic aberration, and it is something that sometimes happens when you take a photo with a cheap camera, but it looks kinda nice so people sometimes use it in games. So there you have it, this is the basic overview of my basic 3D renderer. I hope I'll finish it soon and when I'll do that, I'll upload a video where I'll talk a little more about the API and how to use it. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing and don't forget to share to a friend that likes this kind of things. Until then, since you watched till the end, you will also like this video where ChatGPT makes me an entire C++ game from scratch, or this video where I write a game without using any library or runtime, but only the Windows API. See you.